What's up guys, Mikkel here, and in this video, we're gonna be going over a brand new filing in the Ripple SEC case that you guys need to see. One of the most interesting things going on in the Ripple SEC case right now is around the Patrick Duty expert report. The SEC hired a guy named Patrick Duty to write an expert report on what he thought XRP holders were thinking when they bought the XRP token. This report has created a lot of controversy as of recent because the SEC is desperately trying to prevent the retail public from being able to see it. Now, this is pretty ironic considering the SEC is supposed to be protecting retail investors and this exact report was written about the retail investor. In this video, I wanna show you what we just learned about this expert report. And this was directly from the filing that we just got today. Make sure you guys stick around for that. You are not gonna to wanna to miss it. I also wanna go over something very interesting about the SEC's claim of attorney client privilege over the Ethereum free pass emails. I saw something on Twitter today that almost no one has been talking about and it's actually very bullish for ripple on this argument make sure you stick around for that last of all at the end of the video i want to show you something gary gensler said that is going to be a huge deal for all of crypto i could not believe it when i first saw this but guys this is going to be massive and we don't know exactly when this is going to come out but it's going to define the sec's role in all of crypto make sure you stick around for that if you guys are new here or come here all the time please take a second to hit the like and subscribe button down below it goes such a long way in helping this channel grow and really means so much to me. If you guys are ever looking for a good place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out the link in the description below. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. Real quick, if you guys are interested in getting six free stocks, make sure to sign up with Moomoo using the link in the description below. If you deposit $1, you'll get six free stocks. Each one could be up to $1,000. This deal ends in June, so make sure to check it out. Let's jump into it though, and I wanted to start out and quickly talk about the attorney-client privilege argument being made by the SEC right now. This is something we've been talking about a lot on this channel and is a huge deal for this case. The SEC is desperately trying to use the attorney-client privilege privilege to try to prevent themselves from having to hand over the Bill Hinman Ethereum free pass emails to Ripple. We know that this was a pretty desperate attempt by the SEC, but we have been waiting for a ruling on this for a while now. We have talked all about the SEC's chances of actually winning this attorney client privilege argument, but we never actually talked about what a win would look like. I actually saw a very interesting update by Sherry V today on Twitter that actually is going to show us that even if the SEC was to win the attorney client privilege argument, it really wouldn't even be that big of a win. Take a listen to this. If Judge Netburn were to grant the attorney-client privilege, Hinman would only be allowed one assigned attorney. That would be Seaman. All others would not be applicable. For me, I see only two viable options, deny attorney-client privilege or grant it in part. Now, this is really important to pay attention to because we know that when Bill Hinman wrote the Ethereum free pass speech, he got input from multiple different attorneys. What Sherry V is saying right here is even if the SEC was to win the attorney-client privilege, they would still not be able to hide every single email from Ripple. Some would still be forced to go over to them. They'd only be able to bar some of the emails that had to do with one specific attorney and the SEC would have to make the call on what attorney that would be. This means that even if the SEC was to win the attorney-client privilege, Ripple could still gain access to a lot of the different documents in this case. This is really important to point out because this means that the SEC is really fighting a losing battle here. Unless they can cover all the really bad emails purely based on one attorney, then this is likely still going to go down as a loss for them. It's also very important that this is only preventing Ripple from getting to see the emails. The court is very likely still going to get to see these emails, and that's going to put the SEC in a very poor position if summary judgment does end up coming around. Now, I personally believe that this case will be settled beforehand, and the SEC, as you can tell, has really backed themselves into a corner here. It looks like no matter what, Ripple will get to see some of these emails, and there is no doubt that the court will eventually see all the emails. It's so hard for me to envision how the SEC could be comfortable going to summary judgment if these emails are in fact as bad as many of the lawyers have speculated they would be who are following this case. In my opinion, it makes a lot more sense for the SEC to actually settle rather than risk these emails getting out there. But let's see what happens. This is something we need to be paying very close attention to. Real quick though, I want
want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you think Ripple wins the attorney client privilege argument, leave the letter W for win. If you think the SEC wins this argument, leave an L for a loss for Ripple. I'm looking forward to see what you guys think. Now I want to go over the brand new filing we just got today out of Ripple in this Ripple SEC case. And this is all around the SEC's expert witness, Patrick Duty, and his assertion that he knew what XRP holders were thinking when they bought XRP. Essentially, the SEC is trying to hide these documents from getting out to the public because they likely know how absurd this guy's statements are going to be. But Ripple was actually not having it. And they absolutely flamed the SEC in this filing and let us know that our assumption about Patrick Duty's expert report has really been right all along. I'll get into more detail about that in a minute. But take a look at this because this is very interesting. James K. Filing tweeted out, the Ripple defendants have filed a letter opposing the SEC's continued efforts to seal its response to the Amakai regarding the SEC's expert stating that the SEC's arguments are on their face about shielding the SEC from public criticism. So that last statement about the SEC being on their fence was essentially a lawyer's version of a roast. What the Ripple lawyers are pointing out here is how absurd it is for the SEC to be once again claiming that the public cannot see these documents because they're worried about the expert safety. What Ripple lawyers are pointing out here is that none of the proposed redactions reveal any sensitive facts about the expert, and therefore it's a complete joke for the SEC to be once again trying to prevent the retail public from seeing this report. And what actually makes it extra bad is if you guys remember a while back, Judge Torres actually already ruled that the SEC is not allowed to submit this report under seal. That means Judge Torr has already told the SEC that we, the public, deserve to see this report, and she actually explicitly said that. What the SEC is trying to do now is take advantage of the system. Judge Torres told the SEC they can redact very limited information, such as the guy's name and his address, so that people can't go to his house and torture the poor guy. I think that's pretty reasonable to expect. But the SEC essentially abused their power and is now trying to redact the entire thing and essentially just make it so no one can see what this expert was trying to say. This is completely abusing the powers that Judge Torres gave the SEC for redactions, so I don't think she is going to be having any of this. Now, what was actually even even more interesting about all of this was another statement made by the Ripple lawyers in this filing, and that was that there was an obvious flaw in the expert's methodology. And this was the Ripple lawyers actually talking about the way in which Patrick Duty constructed his expert report. The Ripple lawyers were essentially roasting the SEC and saying that the only reason the SEC wants to redact so many different portions of this expert report is not actually because the SEC is worried about Patrick Duty's safety like they said in all their filings, but actually because his methodology for how he wrote his expert report was so poor that the SEC is worried that they are going to face criticism if it gets out to the public. The SEC is already in very hot water in this case, and I want to show you guys why this exact motion could actually make things much, much worse. So attorney Bill tweeted out, good to know there is an obvious flaw in Mr. Duty's methodology. That would be an understatement. We already know what it is anyway so why hide it? And what attorney Bill is alluding to here, and I think he knows this is a really big deal, is he is alluding to the fact that Patrick Duty, and so is Ripple, did not interview a single XRP holder about what XRP holders thought when they were buying XRP. Patrick Duty wrote this report purely because the SEC paid him to do it. And when John Deaton entered this case to represent XRP holders, it became obvious that the SEC was not enforcing their most important mandate, which is to protect the retail investor. The SEC is desperately trying to hide this report because they know it is going to completely expose the fact that they are ignoring this mandate right now and are pursuing this case to win at all costs. The SEC is fine hurting retail investors. They are fine playing games and lying to the court if it means winning this case. The SEC is so far out of line and they know it. That's why they are now desperately trying to hide their own expert reports because they know they are in hot water and they know that this expert report out of Patrick Duty is going to spell a lot more trouble for the pressure of mounting against their agency.
Last of all, I wanted to finish with this because this was actually very interesting for a couple of reasons. This is from Watcher Guru. Justin, the US SEC Chair Gary Gensler is reportedly proposing a single rule book approach to regulate all of cryptocurrency trading. Now, the reason I thought this was so significant is to date, the SEC has given almost zero guidance to the cryptocurrency market. Pretty much the only thing we know is if you have an ICO, the SEC is going to come after you. And then if you're Ripple, the SEC will come after you, even if they don't have a real reason. The reason this is so significant is this is going to be the first time since 2018 we have seen any guidance from the SEC. Another reason why this is so significant is because the SEC is going to have to be very careful not to trip up over their own words and say anything that could hurt them in the current Ripple case. This is very interesting because I don't know how the SEC is going to craft these rules around what's currently going on with XRP. XRP is one of the most compliant cryptocurrencies out there, so how could the SEC come out and give realistic guidelines that go completely around this current case? Gary Gensler actually admitted today that not all cryptocurrencies are securities, some are actually commodities, and he recognizes that. Considering this is one of the hottest topics in the cryptocurrency and traditional markets today, what's a security and what's a commodity, I would imagine this is something that's going to be outlined when he gives this new approach on how he's going to regulate cryptocurrency trading. This is something we want to pay very close attention to because I could honestly see the SEC making sure that the current Ripple case is done before they come out and give this guidance. We know that to date, Gary Gensler has been very cautious with what he has said about crypto cryptocurrencies and that is very likely because he does not want to contradict anything going on with the ripple sec case he wants to be very careful that he doesn't say anything that could screw him over in the current litigation unfortunately for gary i think he was screwed over before this case already started because the sec brought a case that they could never win either way though this is very interesting and i'm definitely going to be looking forward to this guidance to see how it would impact the current ripple sec case if it's still going on when he makes these statements either way guys thank you so much for coming make sure to like and subscribe it really does help me out so much and for now mickle out